Welcome back to the channel guys. Here we're looking at the L322. Looks like we have an issue here with the suspension fault. So as you can see the vehicle is sitting quite a bit lower. Now I have it raising. The vehicle's running but I can hear an air leak sound or a hissing sound out of the left front wheel here. So you can see on our 4x4 info screen the vehicle front end is refusing to raise and it's giving us the fault here you can see the red flashing that's the left front wheel and that's where I'm hearing the hissing noise which is an air leak so the vehicle is unable to raise its height to a standard height so it will put the vehicle kind of in a limp mode and it will tell you here on the screen suspension fault and to max your speed to 30 miles per hour so here it's telling me the vehicle is lifting slowly so we know there is a problem eventually it will notice that it's unable to lift it so the system's trying to fill the air up to raise the vehicle here in the front end but it's unable to do that since we got a leak here the system has overheated trying to keep lifting that since we have a leak it will not lift so now it has shut itself off to cool the pump discover a leak right at the airbag so the airbag itself has deteriorated it's got a hole in it on the inside here, and that's where it's leaking from. So we'll end up replacing the complete strut on this. You can kind of get these, just the airbag separately, but I recommend just getting the whole strut with the airbag and replacing that. So we'll go ahead and remove this uh, strut. So obviously you want to jack the vehicle, put it on a jack stand. Then we'll be loosening up some bolts here. Uh, these are 22 millimeter bolts, two of them on the strut here. There's one up top here. One at the bottom here. The stabilizer link will have to come off. It's an 18, millim 18 millimeter screw here or a bolt that needs to come off. And then we'll go ahead and remove all these lines. There is a line in the front of the strut here that's clipped onto it. So you need to unclip that. And we need to unclip all these lines from the strut here just by pulling them out of the housing here. Kind of like so. So we'll move everything that's attached to this here. There is a brake line that goes through there also. And that'll also come out of there by just pulling them out. So we'll go ahead and remove all these. We have our stabilizer link unhooked from the strut here. One 18 millimeter bolt here that unhooks that. We do have our strut bolts out. Now these do tend to seize in there just because it's metal collar here and they tend to seize inside of this uh, knuckle. So that's something you might want to spray it beforehand, uh, penetrating oil. So you want to go ahead and lube those up. That will help. Otherwise you can, you can take a breaker bar on this end. Once you have the nut off, try to turn it in there. That'll loosen it up and then you can take a hammer on this end. Put the bolt on just by hand and you can hammer it out this way. Uh, they weren't too bad, but they didn't want to come out with these. So before we put these back in, I'll clean them up with a wire brush and uh, put some anti-seize on them before I put those back in. Other than that, at this point, you do want to... This, uh, this wire for the pads sits right in here in the dust cap on the caliper. You want to just go ahead and undo the dust cap, unplug that out of there. So that'll give you some slack as you as you take the, the knuckle away from the strut. That'll give you some slack. You want to make sure all these uh, all these hoses and cables are out of the mounts on the strut so nothing gets uh, pulled on or breaks or anything like that. Once you have the strut bolts out, you can take the pry bar and separate both of the pieces, the knuckle piece from the strut. Now at this time, the only thing holding the strut is the upper mount so we'll go ahead and go under the hood and loosen up those bolts and remove the complete strut from the vehicle under the hood if you look at where right where the strut is strut tower is here on this side this is just the cover to the center of the of the strut you can go ahead and remove that that just pulls right off now what's holding the strut up top is these three bolts there's one here one here and one here i'm sure they're metrics but for me, 5 8 is what seems to fit the best. So we'll go ahead and remove these three bolts. There's 
one, two. Now, if that's something you don't want to do, you don't want to drop the bolts in there. Unfortunately, I got the camera in one hand and uh, the gun in the other. So what you want to do before you remove the last bolt is you want to keep the other hand on the strut because it is going to tend to drop down. So I'll go ahead and get that done and we'll get back to it. So I was able to find the other nut that I dropped in there. Uh, I got all three of them off. Once you have the strut kind of lower down a little bit, there is an air connection here. That's where your air hose is to feed the to feed this feed this spring. So you want to go ahead and remove that. You can loosen it up here, or you could just cut it with a razor blade or some snips. You should have uh, plenty of plenty of extra on it to to go in the new one. So we'll just go ahead and cut it and remove this complete strut out of there. So here is our complete strut removed from the vehicle. I did end up cutting the line. It's just easier if you, because I know I got a little bit of an extra length, so that will go in the new one. If you don't want to do that, there is a 12 millimeter wrench you can use, and you can unscrew it from there, and that'll go right in your new one then. But like I said, I cut it. I want to replace that end anyways. So here is our airbag complete strut assembly now sometimes they appear a little different comparing to your original now, of course my original is the original that came with the vehicle from factory from Land Rover uh, now once you get the new one you want to make sure all your mounting is in the correct orientation as far as your um, all the hoses and, and your electrical line for the for the brake pads and all that that way you're sure that you got the right side left to right or what have you and you're mounting for your uh, stabilizer link here as you remember I cut my original line so this new strut did come with a new ferrule which is perfect so we'll uh, slip the new line in or the our old line into this new new fitting and that'll screw right into it uh, if you didn't cut yours and you want to use the original one you can go ahead and screw your original line right into this um, so we're ready to go ahead and put this strut back into the vehicle so the first thing we're going to do is hang it here and make our airline connection and then we'll go ahead and push the strut right back into the the tower and put our top screws on and that'll hold the strut there and then we can assemble it from the bottom now one thing I'm not gonna end up using this did come with the new bolts for the top or the nuts I'll use my originals these are kinda I think the originals are better as far as quality wise so I'll, I'll reuse my original ones just a better washer on it and everything when putting this airbag or the strut back in, you just want to get it uh, in the correct orientation. There is a, is a line pin here or the guide pin up top, which if you look at your strut tower, that pin will end up being here. Once that pin is in, you know one, two, three bolts here or the studs will come through there. And that, that would be, so you want to get that in that orientation when you're putting it in and then go ahead and put the nuts up top. So right now we're going to slide it into position. We're going to put our airline back on here. Remember, 12 millimeter wrench. This did come with the new fitting for the airline, so we'll go go ahead and put that on the line and tighten it up on the strut and get the strut into position here. We have our airline attached. It's just by holding the strut here, attaching the airline, you can lean it right on any part of this here on the CV axle, what have you. And then you want to go ahead and align it. Remember, you have an alignment pin here. Once that kind of lines into this hole, rest of the rest of the studs will fall in place. It's kind of cumbersome to try to align that, but remember, just go off of this, align that, move it around to where you need it, get it pushed into where these studs come through, put the nuts on, then it's hanging. So at this time, we'll go ahead and tighten up the top here. We can go ahead and put the dust cover back on the top here. We're done here, so let's go ahead and work at the bottom here and get everything reinstalled. We can go ahead and get these uh, steering knuckle to the strut bolts back in. Now, with doing that, you can you can move the whole whole assembly back and forth to where you need it. You might have to lift it up. Remember, the strut itself will rotate to whatever position you need it to be in. Um, all we're trying to do is get the knuckle back into the strut, aligning these holes with these holes in the strut. Now, I've put some NICs on it. That does help keeping it not seasoned 
Um, so that's what I've done. You can put a jack underneath of this with a wood block or what have you, right out of the rotor or underneath to where the ball joints are, and lift the whole assembly up to align it uh, to get those bolts in. So that's what we're going to accomplish now. I was e easily able to lift up this whole steering knuckle with the rotor and the brake assembly and put it right into the strut and get these two bolts, one here, one at the bottom in. Uh, like I said, if it's easier, you can use a jack at the bottom to get that in. The strut will rotate to whatever position you need it in uh, to get that assembled together. So we'll go ahead and put the nuts back on this and tighten those up just like so here on both of them. Get that tightened up. Uh, next step would be to get the stabilizer link back in. Get that tightened up. And then uh, we'll get all our lines and hoses back in position where they're supposed to be. So at this time I have both of the strut bolts tightened up to the, to the knuckle. Um, I have by using a 7 8 that seems to be best fit holding it from this end and using a gun on this end get those fully and you have some of these cables this one's for the the wear pad for the brake pads the wear sensor remember that goes right on the on the bleeder cap that clips right into there clips in here onto this bracket you got your brake hose going to the caliper that clips into the back of the bracket and then you have the ABS sensor, the traction sensor, what have you, but it is an, it is an ABS sensor. Going to the wheel, the trigger wheel, that clips in here, goes behind the strut itself. And this clip here, the new strut did not come with the new clip, so I had to take it out of the old uh, original strut. And that's what goes into the, that's the ABS sensor behind the wheel here. We're ready to go ahead and install the... The stabilizer bar back in remember this is what I'm doing you can try to lift it by hand to align that hole with the bolt in the or the stud in the stabilizer link you can lift it so we'll just go ahead and jack up remember there's no air in the strut at this time so you can move that around to whatever position you need it in you can turn the wheel if that's off to align this hole with the stud and get that in looks like we need to go a little higher we can go ahead and put the bolt on the end of that once we get it to, at the proper height and get that installed the stabilizer link back in and the bolt tightened up um, you just want to make sure to go over everything make sure you got your strut bolts here at the mount tightened up two of them seven eighths your uh, stabilizer link bolt tightened here upper strut mount bolts are fully tightened here all your cables and hoses hooked up where they're supposed to be and that's all there's to it at this time we're ready to go ahead and put the wheel back on and test the suspension so we'll put the wheel back on get the vehicle back on the ground we'll fire it up and uh, make sure everything is functioning correctly and make sure there's no air leaks uh, and we'll go from there. I did go ahead and undercoat the strut and, and the bolts and everything, all the metal parts. Uh, something you don't have to do. I like doing that with all parts. You can take some Rust-Oleum paint, any kind of paint that you have, um, and, and just coat them. That just gives them extra protection. Where I'm at here in the mid Midwest, th this vehicle does see quite a bit of salt. So this keeps things looking fresh for longer. Uh, so things don't rust up. So let's go ahead and get the wheel back on and test everything. We have the wheel back on the vehicle. The vehicle's off of the jack. Jack stands. It's running. We want to go ahead and cycle through our, our cycle on off-road, vehicle height, and lowering mode. Now at this time, the vehicle is sitting at standard height. I don't hear any any air leak noise out of this strut as it was originally so at this point you want to shut the vehicle off make sure there's no hissing sound from the air leaks or anything like that all the way around um, so we'll go ahead and take the vehicle for a drive so I was able to take the vehicle for a drive drives perfect no issues the wheel is straight no air leaks sits at right height where it should it lowers and raises as it should thank you for watching